God could exist and Christianity could be false. Let me say that again slightly differently. You might be wrong about Christianity being true and right about God being real. As an atheist, I don't think you are. But it's important for you to take this possibility seriously, even though theism being true would boost the plausibility of Christianity some. Instead of treating the potential truth of theism as a slight boost, however, it seems to be doing a lot of work in giving people confidence in their specific religious beliefs. I think the reasoning goes something like this. If God exists, one of the revealed religions is probably true. The revealed religion that has the best chance of being true is Christianity. So if God exists, Christianity is probably true. For the purposes of this video, let's accept premise 2 for the sake of argument, even though it's disputable. There are a couple of points we might want to make about this argument. First, it will be inconsistent for many Christians to run it. Why? Well, because in order to explain away the tremendous amount of horrific suffering we observe, they will typically appeal to mystery or emphasize the vast chasm between our mind and God's, such that we aren't in a position to judge what kinds of things God would or wouldn't allow. If you can't think of a reason, does that mean there really can't be one? If you look into a pup tent and I ask you, do you see any St. Bernards? And if you don't see any St. Bernards, you say, no, I don't see any St. Bernards, then we can safely conclude there probably are no St. Bernards in the tent, because if there were a St. Bernard in the tent, you'd probably see it. But if you look into, the, into a pup tent and I say, do you see any no see -ems? No see if you live near the Great Lakes, are little gnats that come, are so small they come through the screen and bite you anyway. And I say, so if you look into the pup tent, and I say, do you see any no see -ems? And you say, I don't see any no see -ems. That doesn't mean that there aren't any no see in there, because if there were, you couldn't see them. When you say, because I can't think of any good reason why God would continue to allow evil and suffering to happen, therefore there can't be one, you're assuming that whatever reasons there would be would be more like St. Bernard's than no see -ems. Well, why should there be? But if they do that, then that very kind of thinking could be used as a reason to be skeptical of premise one. If God can have reasons beyond our grasp for permitting the Holocaust, surely he could have some for not revealing himself on a timetable that makes sense to us. And who's to say that intelligence isn't in the early stages of development on Earth in the grand scheme of things anyway? Second, one could reject premise one by claiming it's false if none of the revealed religions are well evidenced. Consider. If God exists, he would probably reveal himself in a well-evidenced religion. There are no well-evidenced religions, so if God exists, he probably hasn't revealed himself. You might even give this a bit of a hiddenness flavor and say something like, if God really existed, surely he'd reveal himself in a well-evidenced religion by now, but there aren't any of those, so he probably doesn't exist. This is what I think people are getting at when they say that reading the Bible made them an atheist. And I read the Bible cover to cover, and I think that anyone who is thinking about maybe being an atheist, uh, if you read the Bible or the Koran or the Torah uh, cover to cover, I believe you will emerge from that as an atheist. But the Bible itself will turn you atheist faster than anything. Strictly speaking, reading the Bible should not cause atheism unless you are implicitly working through the reasoning described earlier. Because, as I said at the beginning, God could exist even if Christianity is false. Moving beyond that, though, my main points are 1. If you are attracted to appealing to mystery to get God off the hook for stuff as a Christian, you shouldn't use arguments like this. And two, skeptics can turn this style of reasoning back onto the Christian pretty easily. It would be quite surprising for God to reveal himself through a religion with less than ideal evidential support, wouldn't it? Not to mention using one with big human sacrifice vibes like Christianity. I go over more of that in this video next to me, so tap here and I'll see you there.